it is not Torghast. Let's go. Last time we spoke on World of Warcraft, I told you that I was having a blast with Dragonfly. I was playing it in my casual time off stream, and I was waiting for the next big piece of content. I got my character, my one character that I'm sticking to for now, up to the point where he was just farming Mythic Plus and farming raids, and that was kind of where he wanted to be. So we are going to get, just in a couple of weeks, March 21st, 10.07. The PTR has been up for a while, but it's been changing a lot. And as I want to be more concise with my WoW videos, I waited till now to have a look at it, and there have been several changes, so I'm glad I did that. And a lot of people are telling me, it's like, hey, it's the new Torghast. They're iterating on Torghast. And I was like, what? This is a new Blizzard we're dealing with. They're communicating well. Are they actually sh going forward with iterating on their old content and being like, hey, what did we do wrong? Let's do it right. But Blizzard has been pretty clear about something. Before 10.07 launches, 10.1 is already like on the PTR. We're going to be looking at that this week, so stay tuned for it. And they're trying to put the message out there. 10.0.7 is not a big patch. It's not, it's not supposed to be. Please, God, will you take a look at 10.1 where the new raid and stuff is? This is a filler patch. This is an in-between patch. This is part of the workflow of more content, more content, more content to keep you interested in World of Warcraft rather than big spates and big gaps that are coming between it. Think of this as similar to like a Brawler's Guild patch. That's what we're getting, along with a bunch of class changes and all kinds of things going on. This is what this patch is going to be focused on. And where are we going? We're going to a new zone. Uh, it's actually not a new zone. We're going to the Forbidden Reach. If you've played an Evoker, and I assume most of you have, uh, you will recognize this zone. It is the starter zone for the Evoker. That's where we're heading to. And we're going to be doing a few things that... I find a little confusing, and then one big thing that this whole zone is designed around, which is going to be the Zascara Vault. So let's get started. First of all, we got new Dragon Glyphs, all right? Now, I mentioned in my preview of 10.1 is that I'm really interested when we get to the cavern what the new Dragon Glyphs are going to be like, and I'm going to look at that this week because, as expected with the 10.07, I'd already played it, is the Dragon Glyphs are kind of as normal as they are in the world. Now, I've no doubt most of you will use a weak aura or something to just get them in like two minutes i didn't have any add-ons because it's the ptr and i found them all in like 20 minutes they're very easy to pick up there's only five of them eight of them something like that uh but you get a big message saying hey there's a dragon glyph nearby uh and you just go and pick it up and grab it they're all in the places you would expect them to be if you've done the initial ones throughout Dragonflight, you will find them very quickly and the main addition is going to be the stop function i have no idea why anybody would want this i've seen people ask for it uh, on occasion, but I, I don't get it. <laughs> I have no idea. I've played without, around with it now. i like, I don't get it. Well, uh, I guess. <laughs> so what the mechanic is, is you're, if you're going at super high speed or any speed at all, your dragon will come to a complete dead stop. And once you've unlocked both of the new traits, you also gain a vigor so you can turn around if you want to. That was the only thing I found. I was like, why haven't I just turn around with my mouse? I don't know, but there's, there are definitely a portion of the community who do not like dragon flying. That, like, I'm not going to pretend that doesn't exist. It absolutely exists. This might alleviate some of the issues they have with motion sickness and the fact that they just don't like the speed, the sense of speed that Blizzard worked really hard on. They don't like it. They prefer the old style. It's not hover. doesn't let you hover. Your dragon just comes to a stop. It's as if you, you just dead stop, and then you gain a vigor so you can take off again in another direction. I personally don't see the point in it. But it is what you're getting. Uh, it is one of those things. So, as you can expect with a new open zone for end-level content, yes, there's a new currency. Uh, that exists. It's called Elemental Overflow. You get quite a lot of this. I've probably done maybe seven or eight hours of this zone, and I've got, like, tens of thousands of this stuff uh that you pick up and you get a few daily quests every day these really are just to give you some elemental overflow that you can spend and i want to point something out this zone is entirely about cosmetics that's what it's about it's about cosmetics and catch-up gear that's it gearing your alts it's a really it's a small patch with a bit of a fun system that we're getting to that's designed around getting a load of cosmetics there was a lot of complaints at the lack of cosmetics lack of mounts things like that that came with the launch of dragonflight compared to a normal wow expansion obviously in tow with dragon riding coming in that they didn't have access to a ton of new mounts there's a lot more coming in 10.1 but this is really about picking up a lot of cosmetics and pets and things like that. So that's what's going on out there. Now, one thing I do want to mention about the daily quests is that you can choose which renowned faction you want to focus on. 
you'll get a little NPC. Very similar to what we saw in Najatar, where you got a little NPC that come with, comes with you. It's not as involved as Najatar. There's no, like, rep to grind with that guy or anything. It will literally let you select, oh, I would prefer to get Tuscar reputation. Something like that to help you boost those renown levels up, get you caught up if you've been slacking on them for a while or you've not played Dragonflight for a while. You'll get a nice big boost to reputation through those guys. Uh, now, let's start with the catch-up gear then. So I mentioned that then, and gearing your alts. So what you'll find, very similar to what you've seen in the Thunder Isle, Timeless Isle, things like that, uh, is that you'll kill mobs and they will randomly drop a piece of epic gear. You saw this in Zareth Mortis as well, and ev pretty much every other zone that's like this, that will give you a piece of gear that is bind on accounts, so you can send it off to your alts, and it will turn into a piece of 385 gear. That's what it will do. Now, you're going to fucking hit me because you're like, 385, Mike? Like, what the hell? That's not any good. What you'll also find is you will drop epic upgrade items that you can go to a guy on the island and you will upgrade those items to 398, 395. You can only upgrade them once from what I can see, at least as this PTR stands right now. Now, I should make something clear. The story, which has some progress trackers in most zones, is currently bugged and it's been bugged for weeks. Uh, there's like a cube there. <laughs> you just can't continue the story. So some of this might change. But as it is right now, you can send this gear off to all your characters, and then you can get these drops, which happen very, very regularly with rares, but they kind of happen a lot as well with the normal mobs on the zone, uh, that will allow you to upgrade that to 398, 395, uh, depending on what it is. So, a nice, fresh set of gear for your alts, very easy to passively collect while you're doing this on your main, very similar to what we're seeing in other MMOs, and have seen in World of Warcraft for quite some time. Okay. Let's move on to Zaskara Fault then, because this is what the big deal is with this zone. The whole zone, the daily quests, everything else, is basically just to feed into the vault. What is the vault? Well, the vault is a tower inside a mountain. It's got four floors, each with eight rooms each that are all sealed, and you need a key to open each of the rooms. You don't know what's in the rooms. It's a pure random potluck, what you're going to get in there. And the general idea here is that you will spend your week, if you are somebody who loves farming, really enjoys doing this kind of stuff, and loves farming cosmetics, loves getting collectibles. It's a fun way of doing this. It's basically a big loot box, but it's a bit more... <laughs> interesting than just like open the box and hopefully something good comes out uh you will find keys out in the zone so little mention on this it gives you some keys to get started with so you can try out the vault so basically what you'll do is you'll go into the vault a couple of enemies to kill to secure the vault so you can explore it and then you will go to a door with your key open it and inside will be a puzzle inside will be an enemy to kill inside will be some things to click things like that now, some of the rooms actually need to be paired or even need find three rooms in order to make your room work. So you might enter a room and pull a chain and it'll say a chest has appeared somewhere. You don't know which room it's in. Simple as that. You might walk into a room like I did and it's filled with fire and you can't open any of the chests because the fire is damaging you and interrupting you. So what you might find later on, as I did, is you open another door and that gives you a buff that protects you against fire. So you need that room in order to complete that room lots of little fun things in here a lot of reuse of uh mini games that we saw again back in najatar so you'll see the arcane puzzle has returned that's in here little fun things jiving into slimes trying to grab gems out of the slimes you gotta work your way in and do all that kind of stuff and then some rooms that you simply won't know what to do with until you find the corresponding rooms somewhere else in the tower now what you can definitely end up doing and this happened to me on a couple of occasions is opening a room that you can't do anything with really you'll still get a couple of chests with some gold in some resources things like that um and then you will be like well there's definitely more to do here but I haven't found the corresponding room yet, and I don't know what to do. And then you run out of keys, and you're like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> God damn, I can't do anything with this room. And it feels like you've wasted a key. And obviously, the incentive there is to go out and get more keys. Uh, that's the idea. So you'll get, like, five keys, I think, to start with on your very first time into the vault. Uh, but after that, you're going to have to go and get them. Where do you get them? Well... This is where it gets a little tricky. So the the the, the NPC will tell you is like that. There, someone stole our keys. They're out on the island. Go and farm mobs. Right. That's where it's telling you. Go and farm mobs. A couple of weeks ago, I found that um, rares were dropping them pretty concisely, like 50-50 chance. I killed a lot of rares while I've been farming 10.07, and generally a 50-50 drop on keys, which allowed me in one week to open maybe after four or five hours of playing, I opened maybe 16 doors, uh, so half of the tower I managed to get open. Coming back on the following weeks, though, I killed a ton of stuff and didn't get a single key. So I don't know whether the drop rate is bugged or whether they've lowered it, but I would say to Blizz, don't do that. Like, it, I, 
I, I don't know whether they're aiming for this to be like, you should be, if you want to fully complete the tower, then you should be here four or five days uh, over the course of your week. I, I think that's a bit much considering the new approach they've taken, but then there's probably a thirsty amount of the community that's actually looking for this amount of time. But thankfully, very similar to what we saw in Zareth Mortis and the like, there'll likely be rare hunting groups all the time that are just killing all the rares. So you'll get them done super quickly. Similar to what we saw with all the renowned farming at the start of Dragonflight, I was soloing the rares, so it was taking me an excessively long time <laughs> to do, especially as a prot warrior. I couldn't solo them as Fury. Uh, that wasn't possible, but as, as prot, it was very simple. It just took a hell of a long time to do, even with prot DPS. Uh, and the second week, I didn't get any keys. I've, I've, I've literally, just before we record this, I've played for about three hours. I've killed a ton of stuff. I've done every daily quest. I've even done the elite daily quest um, and didn't get a single key. Uh, to get started in the vault. So I got my quest like, hey, go explore the vault and open a door. Um, I simply can't get any keys, so I can't do it. So hopefully Blizzard is, hopefully there's a bug. Like I said, the story's bugged and things. So I assume the drop rate on the keys will be adjusted to make sense there. So that's what you've got in the vault. Is It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun, especially if you're into farming some collectibles and looking for a less, it's not stressful in any way. Go and grind some mobs, get a bunch of keys, go inside, find pet matching doors, like playing match, match cards things like that, and get a bunch of rewards. Get some pets, get some interesting things. But the primary reward that you can actually get very, very quickly is a very, very powerful ring. It's item level 411, and it comes with a bunch of mods that you'll find inside the vault itself. And these mods are everything from run speed increases, increased damage, cyclone effects. It's You get three gem slots, essentially, on this ring that will give you a whole bunch of stuff uh, to mess around with. So you get to pick and choose them. I have, I think, ten different mods. Uh, I've put three on my ring, but you get this—you get the ring immediately. You'll get it in week one, and uh, you'll have all the keys to get you started. So you'll find a bunch of mods very, very quickly. They drop pretty regularly inside the vault in order to acquire these things. So that's the main function of 10.07's patch in terms of new content, not class changes and things, is going to be this Forbidden Reach, some new dragon glyphs for you to go to, a lot of new collectibles and things you can buy, especially with this elemental overflow, a lot of vendors, so you can pick up some new stuff, some nice catch-up gear for your alts, including an upgrade path, and the main focus is, of course, your Scarab Vault, where you can run in, mess around in there for a few hours you can be in there all day if you want there seems to be no cap on what you want to do if you want to spend all day farming keys which some people will do you can do that that's totally fine you go out and grind the keys or you can do it over a few days i just hope the drop rate on the keys is a little higher than it seemingly is right now uh as for again as for the story i couldn't really tell you anything because the story has been bugged for a really long time so uh, the story of dragonfly has been good for me so far so i'm hoping it works out well overall pretty decent pretty nice bit of content and i'm looking forward to 10.1 especially when the new season and stuff starts so stay tuned for that be subscribed we're going to be looking at 10.1 over the next few days all right guys thank you very much i'll see you again bye bye